hello, 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 everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Miss Glow Glow in the Motivations. Happy Thursday to everybody. God bless you all. Welcome back to this channel. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Tap that notification bell. Thumbs up this video. Share the video out. Tell a friend, tell a friend, friend, tell everybody, friend, about Miss Glow Glow and the motivation. Come along, have a seat. Let's get the word and eat it as meat for today. Today is Thursday. God bless you all. I hope everybody have a blessed day today. And I am here to share the good news of the gospel with you guys. Today we are going to be coming from 1 Corinthians 3 and 16. And we're going to uh, move into the next phase of the video. Going to Matthew 23, 27 through 28. I might read more verses. But the title of this video, the theme, what we're talking about is do our actions reflect our words? Because God's spirit dwells within us. So we need to be seen as if God's spirit dwells within us. Let's read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 16. We jumping straight into this video. So don't forget to subscribe, like, share, thumbs up the video, and leave me a comment down below. 1 Corinthians 3 and 16, read as this. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you. If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy, for the temple of God is holy. Which temple are you? I am recording. Which temple are you? Then it say, verse 16, 18, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem it to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise for the wisdom of this world that he may be wise for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. And again, the Lord knoweth the thought of the wise that they are vain. Therefore, let no man glory in minions, for all things are yours. Just a moment, guys. I'm actually uploading the video. Then it say whether. Okay, that was it. We're going to go back. We're going to go to the footnotes on that. But let me put this title here. So what do you guys have planned for today? What are you guys going to have for dinner today? Um, let me know. Do our actions. Oh. One moment, guys. I'll be done. Y'all hear that little grandbaby back there? That's the only thing when you have people in the house with you. You're you going to hear sounds. You're going to hear sounds. And that little nigga right there... He's very loud. Very loud. You know what I'm saying? But that's my that's my baby. That's my baby. That's my baby. I wouldn't give nothing for him. He's loud. Let the truth be told. Okay. I want to put that in there. I want to put this in there. Uh, and then I'm just going to let this video upload. Add it to the playlist right quick. And this video is already in private. Let's just upload it. Okay? And get back to what we was doing. Now, we just read from uh, 1 Corinthians 3, 16 through 20. 16 through 20. Now, we go to the footnotes on there. Now, remember we talking about 
do our actions reflect our words? Because what it is, is God is trying to let us know that our body is the temple of Christ. And that whatever we put in here defiles this body, which is God's temple. Guess what? It defiles God. If we go to uh, the footnotes, it says two sure ways to destroy a building are to tamper with the foundation of the building, the, which would be the foundation of this temple right here. What do you think? What do you think is the foundation of this temple? Just in case you don't know, the foundation of this temple, our body, is the brain. It is the mind. So, it said there are two sure ways to destroy a building are to tamper with the foundation or to build with inferior materials. You cannot build a true church on any, you cannot build a true church on any, I need to see, sorry. You cannot build a true church on any person or principle except Jesus Christ. You can't build nothing without Jesus. You can try it. You can even build something, but guess what? It will not last because God said, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not, will not prevail against it. Okay? Anything you build need to include Jesus Christ. Anything you build, you start, you try to find, if it don't have Jesus, it's not going to last. Period. Take my word for it. Take my word for it, okay? Then it say Christ will evaluate each, each minister contribution to the life of the church. The day of judgment will reveal the sincerity of each person's work. The day of judgment when we all stand before God, the sincerity, the trueness, the actions of our work are going to be revealed. On that day, everyone will know if your work was done out of good, honest, true, or if it was done in vain. God knows all right now. See, he know what we're doing right now. He know what we even think before we think it. So there's nothing hidden from God. So there's no reason to try to hide anything from the Lord, but... Tell everybody else in the world, I tell your best friend, but you, you think you hot hid it from God. Not so. Not so. Not so at all. Okay? Then it says God will determine whether or not he or she has been faithful to Jesus. God is going to determine if we have been faithful to Jesus' instruction. This Holy Bible right here. This is our instructions. This is our pathway to our life, our future. All we have to do is ask God to order our steps in his word and direct our path with the foundation, with his instructions. And he will do that. He already laid out the way. He paved the way for us. So there is nothing we go through. I don't care how strong it is, how hard it is, how difficult it seems. It doesn't matter what the task is. There is nothing too hard for God. There is nothing we can't do as long as we got Jesus in there. But we need to make him head of our life. Head of our life. H-E-A-D of our life. Don't take God for granted. Because Christ knew you before you was even conceived in your mother's womb. He knew you. He knew when you was going to be born. He knew what day you're going to die. He knew what your name was before you was even came out the womb. He knows everything. This is a man that spoke the world into existence. He spoke it with his mouth. He knows everything. No secret can be hidden from him. Okay. Then it says, where was I at? 
good works will be rewarded. Unfaithful or inferior works will be discounted. Everything you did that's unfaithful or that was inferior to God is going to be discounted, done away with. No credit will be given. I hope you guys getting the wisdom of this. Father God, in the name of Jesus, right now I ask that you open eyes, open ears, open minds, open hearts to receive what your word is saying to them, God. I ask that you put within them a spirit of discernment, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Okay. And then it says, he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire, means unfaithful workers will Unfaithful workers will be saved, but they will be like people's escaping from a burning building after all their possessions, accomplishments, all of their possessions or accomplishments will be lost. You're going to be like a person trying to escape from a burning building. If you are trying to be an unfaithful worker or an inferior worker to God. Like I said, nothing you do that don't involve Christ is going to last. It's not going to mean you no good. No matter how rich you get, if you are not faithful to Christ, when you take that last breath, everything you got is going to be left here. And it's going to be... uh. Look, the Bible say the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the righteous. Okay, somebody that's righteous, that's following God, that's faithful to him is going to enjoy what you have built. And that's all. That's it. That's all. You hear what I'm saying? So everything that you do, if you're doing it in vain, if you're not doing it, to God's will is going to be lost. Do you hear what I'm saying? AC is going to be lost. So whatever you do, make sure you include God in it. And it doesn't matter because first of all, God already know that we are all sinners. We was born sinners. We came into the world sinners. Because of Adam and Eve, through one man, Adam, sin entered into the world. And through one man, who is the second Adam, that is Jesus Christ, came that we may be sin free. We can be forgiven for our sins. No, we are not going to be sin free, but we can be forgiven for our sins. It's just that simple. The Bible tells us that God's word is so clear that even a fool cannot err in it. It may seem hard, but it's not hard. What age did you job? What? When I call him. Oh, okay. So, yes. You know what? As long as you got Jesus, I'm not going to say you don't need nobody else because we living in a world that you're going to need somebody sometime. But as long as you got King Jesus, you don't need to depend on nobody else. Depend on him. Let's re I rephrase that for you guys. Now, the next uh, footnote say, As our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in uh, 1 Corinthians, I mean, yeah, 1 Corinthians 6 and 19. It says, So also the local church, our Christian community, is the temple of God. Just as the Jews' temple in Jerusalem was not to be defiled, the church is not to be spoiled, ruined by divisions, controversies, or other sins as its members come together to worship God. The Bible tells us to forget not to assemble yourselves together and fellowship one with another. We got to fellowship with somebody. God knew that we need somebody to fellowship with. He knew it. That's why he told us to forget not to assemble ourselves together and come together and worship. I'm trying to multitask here, guys. You hear me? I'm multitasking. <laughs> I'm multitasking. Yes, I am. 
I'm multitasking and I'm trying to give you guys some words. Oh my goodness, what in the world? Well, I don't know what is this keep coming on my phone. I really don't. <sighs> I'm going to have to figure that out. I don't know what it is, but uh, I think that was still. Yeah. Okay. So we just letting the video upload, but that was stupid. I don't know. I got this thing keep popping up on my phone, but okay, of course you guys know because you guys got a phone. Sometimes things go wrong with phones. Okay, now when we get to the 18th through the 21st verse, this is Paul. Uh, he was not telling the telling the Corinthians believers to neglect the pursuit of knowledge. He was warning them not to glory. And the wisdom of this age. He said God's way of thinking is far above our way of thinking. He knows all the futile thoughts of the wise. The Corinthians were boasting about wisdom of their leaders and their teachers. That's what they was doing. And he was trying to tell them uh, that God thinking is far above that they're thinking. Okay, and there he said their pride made them value messengers more than the message. Their pride in their heart made them value the peoples that were speaking or uh, bringing the message more than the word itself. Okay, and then it said we are not to put our trust in anyone but God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We are not to put our trust in anyone but God. But God. Then we got another footnote. Now, verse 22. That was the one that said, And ye are Christ, and Christ is God. In verse 22, what they are talking about, this is Paul. He was telling the people that both life and death is ours. He was letting us know that letting us know that both life and death is ours. He said, while non-believers are victim of life, swept along by its current and wondering if there is meaning to it, believers can use life well because they understand its true purpose. Non-believers can only fear death. If you are a non-believer, the word said you can only fear death. For believers, however, death hold no fear, hold no terrors. Death hold no terrors to the faithful believers of Jesus because they know that when Jesus, get, when he died on the cross, when he was crucified, that he was buried, that he went down in the grave and he defeated the grave and death and sin. And he rose up with all power in his hand. So we as believers of Christ know that fear is not of God. He did not give us a spirit of fear. Okay? But I think in Galatians you can read about the um, the fruits of the spirit. Now, it says right here, For believers, however, death hold no terror because Christ has conquered our fears. Death is only the beginning of of eternal life with Christ. When you lose your life in this world, your reward is going to spend eternal life with God in heaven. So death brings eternal life. So we have nothing to fear. Okay? We have nothing to fear. It's over with. It's done. It is done. I got to figure out what's on on my phone. Something is on. I'll have to figure that out later. But um, let me leave this phone alone so I can go to the next thing we're going to be talking about. Now, oh, I know I was finna look up something I just said and I want to be perfectly right with you guys. I don't like to want to lead nobody the wrong way. The fruits of the spirit. I don't want to lead anybody the wrong way. Okay, let's see. I think I made it put up something else. The fruits of the Spirit in the Holy Bible. According
According to Compassion International, Galatians, like I said, the fruit of the Spirit is found in Galatians chapter 5, 5 verse 22 through 23. The fruits of the Spirit, you can read about that. That's why I said God did not give us uh, the spirit of fear. He did not. He did not give us the spirit of fear. So let's go to... Uh, Let's go to Galatian 5, 22 and 23. It says in Galatian 5, 22 and 23, Paul shares a list of nine characteristics that come to fruition in the lives of Christians where they are full of the Spirit of God. It is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Out of all of those nine fruits of the Spirit, you did not once hear fear. God does not give us the spirit of fear. He gives us the spirit of love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. God does not give us the spirit of fear. Let's move on. Let's go to Matthew 23, 27, 28, and then we're going to end this video. That's what we ended on. Matthew 23. I hope y'all getting the wisdom of this word because God's word is good. 23, we're going to 27 and 28. This is going to top it off. Now, why are we going to this word? Because remember, the title of my of this video is, Do Our Action Reflect Our Words? God's Spirit dwells within us. So in order for God's Spirit to dwell within us, we need to have all of the nine characteristics of the fruits of the Spirit. Fear is not one of them. Okay? So let's go. To Matthew 23, verse 27. And it read as thus. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for ye are like unto whited sepulchres, which indeed appears beautiful outward. You appear beautiful on the outside, but are within, but inside of you, you are full of dead men's bones. But on the outside, you are looking beautiful. You are glamorous. But on the inside, honey, your spirit is dead. You are dead. The Bible said you, you, you are full of dead men bones and of all uncleanness. It ain't nothing clean in you, okay? Remember, God's spirit dwells in us. So if God's spirit dwells in us, why do we want to have um, why do we want to have uh, to be full of dead man bones and of all kind of uncleanness? Then 28 say, even so, ye also outwardly appear righteous unto men, but within you are full of hypocrisy and iniquity. Hallelujah, Jesus. That's what you are full of. But if we go to the... um. If we go to the footnotes on this thing right here, which is 27 and 28, uh, it says, Jesus condemned the Pharisees and religious leaders for appearing saintly. You appear for them appearing to be saints, okay, and holy outwardly, but inwardly remaining full of corruption and greed. They was full of corruption and greed. And this is what Jesus, he was condemning the Pharisees and the religious leader for appearing to be sanctified and holy on the outside. But on the inside, they was full of corruption and greed. All kind of uncleanness, all kind of filthiness. Okay, and then they say living our Christianity merely 
as a show for others is like washing a cup on the outside only. If you're living a life trying to be a Christian for other folks to see, this is what the Bible say. It said it's just like you wash a cup on the outside but leave the inside filthy. Who want to use a cup like that? Who Do I want my inside to look like a dirty, nasty, filthy cup? No, I don't. Okay, then it says when we are clean on the inside, hallelujah, come on now, our cleanliness, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, on the outside won't be a sham. When you are clean on the inside, baby, on the outside, you're going to be clean also. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then it said these prophets, wise men, and scribes were probably leaders in the early church, okay, who were persecuted, scribes, and killed as Jesus predicted, okay? That's because, guess what? They looked at beautiful on the outside, so sanctified and holy, but on the inside you was rotten like a core to the bone. My God, Jesus. Thank you, God, for the word. Let's get this Bible and go to the same scripture, Matthew 23. This is just the English version, okay? This just break it down in plain English so you can understand what you read. I like the King James Bible, but sometimes I need to go to the um to the English Bible or NIV or, or, or Amplified or something, okay? Something. To help me to understand what the word of God is saying to me. So that I can be able to relate that word to God's people without causing confusion in their heart. So let's go to 23 and 27. And it read as thus. You Pharisees and teachers are in for trouble. You are nothing but a show out. You are like tombs that have been whitewashed. On the outside, they are beautiful. But inside, they are full of bones and filth. Like a tomb that Jesus said on the outside, they have been washed, whitewashed. They clean, shiny, pretty. But on the inside, they full of bones and filth. That's what you are like. Outside you look good, but inside you are evil and only pretend to be good. Hallelujah. You don't want God to feel that on the inside of you, your heart is evil and, and it's not filled with no good. You want to be clean on the outside, clean on the inside. Hallelujah. That's what we want. Then in 29, he said, you Pharisees and teachers are nothing but a show out. You are in for trouble. You build monuments for the prophets and decorate the tombs of good people. And you claim that you would not have taken part with your ancestors in killing the prophets. But you prove that you are really in the relative. You are prove that you really are the relatives of the ones who killed the prophets. So keep on doing everything they did. He said, you are nothing but snakes and children of snakes. How can you escape going to hell? How can you escape from going to hell when you are a snake? When you are looking good on the outside, but on the inside, you looking, you are nothing but a filthy snake. Don't let your good be not spoken evil of, okay? Just like you want to look good on the outside, let your heart look good on the inside. Do good to people. Treat people right. Love people with the love of God. Respect God peoples. Respect peoples, period. We have to put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole arm of God. And when you put on the whole arm of God, when you put on the whole arm of God, then you cover it. Then you will have all of the fruits of the Spirit inside of you. You won't look like 
uh, a tomb full of dead bones. Hallelujah. I hope that you guys got something out of this because this was a, a word from God. The Bible said, let your yay be yay and your nay be nay. One thing we don't want to do is our actions to reflect dead bones. We want our actions to reflect our life, to reflect our word, to reflect our image. We want to put on the whole armor of God from the crown of our head to the soles of our feet because God's spirit dwells within us. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for the reading of your word. Lord, God, Father, God, let your word be a blessing to the readers, hearers, doers, listeners, and learners. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Why? Because this is the day, this is the day that the Lord has made, that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice, I will rejoice. And be glad in it. Hallelujah. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Remember, motivators, that the giant in front of you, on side of you, and behind you can never, ever, 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 ever be bigger than the God that's in your heart. Clean up your heart and remove. Ask God to remove the dead bones and the snakes and the uncleanness and put within you, create within you a clean heart and renew a right spirit within you. Happy Thursday. This is Miss Glow Glow and the Motivators. And guess what? We are out. Peace. God bless. Remember, we are out under one God, one nation, one love. Peace we have because Jesus left it here with us. And remember that God loved us so much that he allowed his one and only son to lay down his life for us, for the world. Peace. Happy Thursday. God bless. And I love you.